So I'm getting the multi-rock ready. And one thing I want to note is that I ended up peeling most all of the red paper off of this with a hobby knife because I felt that the fit was too snug. All right, here we go. Estes multi-rock flying on a B60, staging to a B44. All right, Estes hijinks on a B64. Now in slow motion. So I did want to talk a little bit about that last launch, the Estes hijinks on a B64. I do want to note that that rocket does not come with the video camera. Uh, the uh, hijinks rocket that you saw in that video came out of this box right here. And um, you can see that it has the yellow nose cone, which does not have a video camera. Uh, the video camera came out of this box, which is an Estes Astrocam kit, and it just so happens that the nose cone from this kit fit perfectly on the hijinks, so that's how I was able to do the video that you just saw. I do recommend putting the video camera on the Estes hijinks because it produced a very stable flight. If you go back and watch the video, you'll see that the rocket does not spin around much, nor does it wobble much for a smaller rocket. So I was quite pleased with how that works. And like I said, I highly recommend doing that if, you, if you're interested in putting video cameras on your rocket. What's up, YouTube? Guess what? Today is launch day, and I'm very excited because it's been a while since I've flown any rockets, so I'm eager to get out on the field and launch some of these rockets. One of the things I was thinking of as I was starting to pack up my rocket stuff to get ready is that in a lot of my previous YouTube videos, I have some discussion about planning what I'm going to launch after I get out on the rocket field. I talk about uh, what the weather's like and kind of making moves on the fly, so to speak, not going in with the preset plan. So one of the questions that I think uh, some of the viewers might have or people who are just getting started in the rocketry is, how do you do that and what do you mean by that? And to start with, I just want to say that I have a lot of rocket supplies and ways to adapt my rockets uh, to fly under certain conditions and uh, I'm going to go over some of those things in this video. So the first topic that I want to discuss is motor adapters and 
Motor adapters are needed because motors come in different sizes. The two most common motor adapters that I use are the 29 millimeter adapting down to 24 millimeter adapter and the 24 millimeter adapter or 24 millimeter adapting down to a 18 millimeter motor. Uh, let's check these out real quick. So this right here is one of my 29 millimeter to 24 millimeter motor adapters. And this consists of the 29 millimeter to 24 millimeter adapter tube, thick tube available from Lock Precision and probably some other vendors as well. And a piece of 29 millimeter motor mount tube that I cut into this ring shape here that I epoxied onto the back of the tube and then I coated the outer ring with epoxy. So let me show you how this works. Uh, the SDES rocket that I have that I use this motor adapter in is the star orbiter here, which we've seen in some of my other videos. And I'm going to show you how I normally uh, prep, prep this motor adapter. So this right here is the motor that I uh, use with the star orbiter and the motor adapter. And this is a reloadable motor. Make sure you check out my tutorial on how to do the reloads for this uh, motor, which is uh, called the, I think it's called the F12 uh, reload tutorial. That was the motor I reloaded in the video. So anyhow, what you do is after you have this thing loaded up is you insert this motor into this motor adapter as such. And I've cut my motor adapter tube to a length such that about three quarters to an inch of motor sticks out the top. And then what I do here is, so I'll push this all the way in, okay? And then I will wrap electrical tape around the top and that will keep this motor from spinning out the back of the motor adapter tube upon launch or upon ejection I mean. So this is how I um, insert it into, oops I got some tape on here, i pull this off real quick. So this is how you insert this uh, motor adapter into this rocket like this and this little piece of blue tape here is for shim, in case uh, you want to shim up your motor adapter a little bit more. Sometimes I have to tear the paper off to fit in some motor tubes and then wrap tape back on to go in other tubes. But that's what tape is for to fix that, but fix that issue with tape. So you push it all the way in, and now your uh, motor adapter ring is flush up against your motor tube, and then you will wrap electrical tape around here multiple times, which will keep the whole motor adapter assembly from popping out of your rocket. All right, now let's go over motor adapters for adapting 24, or excuse me, 18 millimeter motors for 24 millimeter rockets. So the example rocket for this instruction is the Cherokee E and the Cherokee E has a 24 millimeter motor mount because it's designed to fly on 24 millimeter E motors. Although, if you've watched my other YouTube videos, you've seen me fly this rocket on an 18 millimeter C motor as well. So, just to demonstrate, the, this is that same 24 millimeter motor that we just adapted up to 29 millimeter for the Star Orbiter, and you can see that just fits right in here because it's a 24 millimeter mount. Uh, but let's say we want to fly this Cherokee E rocket on a C motor, and this motor here is a C12 4 Q jet motor, which I think would work great in the Cherokee E. Although I haven't flown it in it yet, I think it would work. So, 
The motor adapter for this looks like this. If I remember correctly, I've showed this motor adapter on a previous YouTube video, I believe. I can't completely remember, but we're going to go over it in fine detail here, just in case. So you take this motor adapter here. It's a two-piece motor adapter. This one's from Estes, by the way. It's plastic. And it's very simple. You just set the motor in like this, and then just kind of just kind of fits together real nice like that. And so you see, there's the back of the motor. And so what I like to do for these is I'll put uh, just one wrap of tape towards the top or the forward end, and that will ensure that it won't be too thick to go inside the motor tube. And then I'll wrap a whole bunch of electrical tape on the back, and I'll basically install this the same way I do the Estes 24 millimeter D motor, which you can see in my build tutorial on this Cherokee E rocket. Uh, so you can see here, fits really well, works great. I love these motor adapters for these rockets. Uh, they're they're very helpful. You, one of the things I've done in the past was just wrap a bunch of tape around the 18 millimeter motors and really what that does is it just adds too much weight and it's just the center of gravity of a rocket too far aft so I was really glad when I saw these uh, red plastic uh, motor retainers from Estes available because they're an excellent solution to this uh, problem where you're wanting to fly your 20, 24 millimeter motor diameter rocket on a small field on an 18 millimeter motor because most everyone who's experienced in rocketry, and especially men in high power rocketry, knows that everybody has a rocket in their fleet that they built and they've flown. Oftentimes it's a certification rocket, and they built it with a 29 millimeter motor mount, and then they decide they want to fly it on a 38 millimeter motor, and that does not work because you would have to get out a hole saw and drill a hole in the back of your rocket and basically rebuild your rocket to try to make the motor fit. I don't think many people do that. However, if you build a rocket with a 38 millimeter motor mount, you can always adapt it down to a 29 millimeter motor mount. Or, for especially on level two rockets, if you build your rocket with a 54 millimeter motor mount, you can adapt it down to a 38 millimeter motor mount because after you get certified you want to fly bigger and bigger motors and that's just kind of how it works so I want to do this section on motor mount adapters because they are uh, very important to rocketry and especially uh, when you're trying to make adjustments out on the field and trying to decide what motor you want to fly in your rocket after you get to the field. All right, now that we're done talking about motor adapters, let's talk about recovery systems. So a lot of times I'm switching up my recovery systems at the field, depending on the wind, the size of the field, the motor I'm selecting, the previous flights before the subject rocket that I'm about to attempt. We saw in my last video where I made the decision to replace the parachute in the Estes Goblin rocket with a streamer. Well, actually, I believe the Goblin comes with a streamer. Then I replaced it with a parachute and then went back to the streamer. Anyways, the discussion is about changing your recovery system on the field. So I wanted to go over how I do that. And... The way, the way I do it really is I have a whole lot of supplies. I have a whole lot of parachutes. Uh, so, and a lot of times I keep them in the packages because I already have so many. And when you keep them in the package, they stay uh, fresh and don't dry out. And they work really well upon first use. And you don't oftentimes have to go too crazy with talcum powder. But I also have a whole lot of homemade uh, ripstop nylon parachutes that I will also use. Those are normally only applicable to a little bit bigger rockets and that might only be because I have a regular ripstop nylon. I'm not sure what the thickness is, but you can get really thin 
thin uh, sheet uh, ripstop nylon as well. That might work for some of the even smaller rockets. So step number one is to just accumulate a bunch of parachutes, make them or buy them, or stow them away as you buy more and more rockets. So that's one way I do it. The other way is uh, I'll make homemade streamers. And my favorite stream type of streamer is out of is to make a streamer out of tray paper like this and to just unravel the cray paper and then take a strip of masking tape and put the masking tape over the cray paper and that makes the uh, cray paper tough enough to not rip when the uh, ejection occurs and the uh, rocket's coming down and is being subject to more stresses. Now in my uh, launch box I'll also keep a lot of supplies uh, that help me attach these recovery systems to my rockets and uh, mainly those include a plethora of different types of attachment line. So here I got some thin diameter paracord and I have some, this is quarter inch polyester elastic. It's stretchy. This is like shock cord. So if I want to extend the length of my shock cord, I, I, have, I, keep, I keep some of this in my box. Then I also keep thinner version of it. I believe this is one eighth, one eighth of an inch uh, wide. And I thought I brought it down, but I also use a uh, little quick links to attach my parachutes. So having these supplies on hand allows me to switch up my recovery system as I need on the field and after I've flown other rockets. Okay, so we covered, I believe, two of the most critical topics of dealing with switching up your rocket plans out on the field, which were the uh, motor adapters and the recovery systems. I hope that was helpful, but I'm kind of out of time uh, to keep talking about this stuff because I need to go ahead and load up my car and get to the launch.